But the thing which really turned me around, actually, is it's a bit of a story. But my dad used, to, being a, being quite posh, he used to get his hair cut in Simpsons of Piccadilly. And they, at the time, I mean, Simpsons was enormous, and they had about thirty chairs down in the basement. It was just huge. And I went down there with him one day, and I was I must be about fourteen, fifteen, and I just went for a wander, as you do. And on the first floor of Simpsons, there was Keith Prowl's music, and they sold tickets. And I saw, ah, Bob Dylan at the Royal Albert Hall. And my parents, when they went to the States, had, all, had come back, they'd, all, they'd actually bought me the first two Bob Dylan albums. How hip is that for kind of, you know, middle-class Jewish people? Actually, no, it isn't actually, because he was, you know, one of the faith. Um, <clears throat> so basically, they bought me these albums, and I thought, well, I've got to go and see them. So I went down to my dad, I said, I need two tickets. He said, oh, fine, no problem. They're about, I don't know, 15 shillings each or something. So my... My friend and, and myself went to this, and it was the Royal Abbott Hall, 66, with the band. And I have to tell you, it really did change my life around. It was one of those moments where the whole thing, your whole life just goes click, like that. You just get it immediately. Suddenly you realise, Jesus, this is what rock and roll is. This is what rock and roll is all about. Deep Purple, DPO, uh, had a label, I believe, through EMI. They also had another label called Oyster, which went through Polydor, and it had Richie Blackmore's Rainbow in it. It also had the Straubs, and I think one or two other things. Oh, and Pal, which was Pace, Pace Ashton and Lord, which was horrific because good old Tony Ashton was never sober, ever. Um, and on, I think on the third gig, he actually fell into the orchestra pit and broke his leg, and he spent the rest of the tour playing piano like that completely off his face. He, the story is that he actually didn't need any anaesthetics when they set his leg. He was <laughs> pre-anaesthetised. So I did the Richie Blackmore English tour, which was fantastic. I mean, it was astounding. He wouldn't play certain gigs because they weren't big enough to hold the rainbow. Do you remember the rainbow? Which had thousands of lights in it. It was just madness. Ronnie James Dio was the lead singer, Bob Daisley was in it, Cozy Powell, who actually was a really nice man, I mean a really nice boat. Richie Blackmore was totally, you couldn't speak to him. I mean the Richie Blackmore tour was fantastic because it was just filled with the lunacies, the absolute madness. They, they were trying to get rid of the bass player and I cannot remember his name. So rather than sack him, they wanted him to leave his, of his own volition so they really helped him. So for example things like it was, and it was Spinal Tap. So he'd, he'd walk through customs and they'd say, uh, excuse me, sir, I'd, I'd like to look in that bag. As they opened the bag, there was basically salami in there, but tons of salami. I mean, just the smell, from what I gather, was just vile beyond belief. Or one night, he, this bass player took a, a very, very young lady back to his, his hotel room for some horizontal exercise. And suddenly there was a javelin that was thrown through his door. Richie used to travel with javelins. I'm being serious. <clears throat> you know, in, in the flight cases, there'd be these huge long things with these javelins in. It was all, it was all madness. And Bruce Payne, who, who is now the managing, man, manager of Deep Purple, he was trying to hold the whole thing together. And it was just like a circus. 